genocide, Holocaust. What comes to mind when you think about this? Shout out. What comes to mind when you think about the word Holocaust? World War II. World War II, right. Death camps. No one, not one of you probably thought about the Native Americans. Now, it isn't argued that the Native American genocide was the worst genocide in the history of the New World. Now, a lot of you say, no, oh, you can't, you can't uh, compare that to the Jews. Well, let's look at the uh, numbers. According to the uh, University of Colorado, there were an estimated 6 million Jews killed in the Holocaust World War II. Now, I'm not saying that that wasn't bad. That was very bad. But looking at the numbers of the Native American genocide, before 1500, there were 12 million uh, Natives all around the Americas. In the census of 1900, there were only 100,026 100, left. Sorry for that. Now, how did so many die within that short period of time, a short period of 400 years? Well, when the settlers came and the Americans came through the uh, continents, they used biological warfare in the form of smallpox blankets. This was, of course, when they would take people with smallpox and they would use the blankets and then sell them to the Native Americans for profit. And the Native Americans would then die because they don't have any immunity to smallpox. This is now considered biological warfare and a war crime. The second, uh, well, another instance is starvation. Uh, when Custer came, the Lakota, I am personally one-fourth Lakota Indian, uh, he came and he killed all the buffalo, almost to extinction. There used to be herds of millions, and now they're all gone. You're, you're lucky to see a herd of a hundred. This is also considered an act of genocide, starvation, and a war crime. Along with these, there were many massacres. One that I uh, always think about is the Massacre of Wounded Knee. There were a tribe that had met for religious purposes, and the cavalry came and slaughtered them all. Men, women, children, 150 were slaughtered that day. Those who escaped were hunted down and killed. This is uh, Chief Bigfoot. He was the chief of that particular tribe, of the Dakota tribe. And what they did is they injured him, and they uh, mutilated him. It's covered with snow now, but they, what they did is they cut off his penis and left him to uh, die of exposure. And that's, this is just one of the pictures from the aftermath of Wounded Knee. This is a newspaper clipping from the Daily Republican. It was an old uh, newspaper long, long ago. And right here it says, uh, $200 reward for every redskin. This is uh, fur traders. What, what they would do is they would hunt the uh, natives, they would scalp them, and for every scalp, that's $200. Back then, 200 was a lot. And so we have all these horrible ways of natives dying. Eventually, the natives lost. They were put on reservations. Now. This is what makes, makes me most sick. This is all terrible. But when the natives were put on the reservation, something called the assimilation policy was passed. What this did is it took away the native children from the households or the families, put them into boarding schools. My dad went through this. My grandma went through this. My uncle went through this. My great-grandma went through this. I have so many family members that were a victim of this. And what they would do is they would, in the early days, they would take away their heritage. They would force them to learn English. They would take away their religion. Now the Bible says to spread the gospel. Well, this was forcing God into a different culture. They would take away their clothes. They would cut off their braids, which were like, sacred to them almost. And they would force them to be civilized. Now, what if they didn't do this? They were beaten. They were humiliated. They were forced to strip naked in front of their class members. And uh, they were sometimes mutilated. Both men and children were sometimes uh, castrated or made sterile, so they couldn't have children. There's a quote from one of the schools that says, Kill the Indian, save the man. This means uh, to take away everything that the Indian is and replace him with a civilized white man. Now, you guys might be thinking, okay, that's a long time ago. You know, like, you know America was just being formed. You know, it's, it's not happening today, right? You could not be more wrong. Today, we have the reservations, and what we have around here is the Puyallup Reservation. The Puyallup Reservation is one of the more rich reservations uh, in the reservation world. Now, that's because it's right next to a highway, and they built a casino within the last 20 years. Before that casino, they were dirt poor. They were just barely scraping by. Now, let's compare that with the Duwamish Reservation. Do you guys know what the Duwamish Reservation is? No, I'm not surprised, because it doesn't exist. Duwamish are extinct. They're gone. Why? 
We needed a place to build Seattle. Let's talk about where my dad grew up, the Pine Ridge, Res Pine Ridge Reservation. On the Pine Ridge Reservation, 97 are below the poverty rate. Unemployment is 85 to 95%. The infant mortality rate is the highest in the continent, not the country, the continent. So that's Canada, that's Mexico, that's everywhere. And uh, the income is about $3,000 a year. I have personally seen fam uh, families who live in like a little trailer and there's like 12 people per family because they can't afford anything else. Now, the unemployment rate. Why don't they just get jobs? Well, there's, back on the reservation, there are no jobs. They cannot legally lease their land due to the treaties that they signed unwittingly. And they have no economic value in, in them. This is the uh, part of the Pine Ridge Reservation. It's called the Badlands, and it's called that for a reason. It's all jagged and rocky, and there's, there's some like grass run on there, but you can't raise crops there. You can't raise cattle. You can't do anything. Uh, and then there's obviously the question, why don't they just leave the reservation? On the reservation, there is so much poverty, alcoholism, addictions, just all these terrible things. Why don't they leave? Well, they can't. If you go back to the Pine Ridge Reservation, or really any reservation, the racism is borderline illegal. Personally, when I go back there, I am lighter skinned, so I'm not that dark, so I don't get it a lot, uh, that much. But when I go back there, I have seen, there's a hot springs that I go to every year, and I've seen little kids pushed out of the lines or pushed off the toys to make room for the white kids. Uh, my dad is darker skinned than I am. We've been uh, denied food at a restaurant because he's native. I remember uh, my friend Clint was chased through the hills for a few miles, beaten an inch of his life because he was native. A few years ago, there was a man who went to a bar. I've seen the bar. It's closed now. There's a big sign that says, no Indians allowed. He went in, and uh, they took him, bent him over a pool table, pulled down his pants, got a broomstick, and, well, killed him. Now, these are all terrible things. But what can we do to help? We need to support the tribes. If you go back there, and they're not getting any, really any federal help. We need to support them, we need to go back and help, and really we need to say we're sorry. The, the uh, Germans paid for the Holocaust war crimes, why hasn't America paid for theirs? Thank you.